Turning now to California's gubernatorial race, the LA Times says they're going to be endorsing Governor Gavin Newsom in his run for a second term. The announcement comes just a month away from the statewide primaries, which are set for June 7th. Joining us now to discuss the endorsement is Senator Melissa Melendez of the 28th District. Senator, welcome. Good to see you tonight. Thanks, Ginger. Thanks for having me on. Always nice to see you. Always good to talk with you. Get some of your insight of what's going on in Sacramento, but this also includes what's going on in L.A. What do you think of the endorsement from the L.A. Times? Uh, well, I think no one should be surprised. I mean, if they didn't endorse him, I think perhaps the you know planets would have fallen from the sky. I mean, this is this is not a surprise. This is um, par for the course for the L.A. Times. Yeah, certainly. So I, I, I think I'm with you there. You kind of expect it. Um, but what do you think it says about how the L.A. Times feels Newsom's job has been going? I mean, if you're endorsing a candidate, that would say you feel they've done a good job. Yeah, I, I read the article and it was kind of funny to me how they just really tried very hard to highlight the things that he has done well. It was quite a stretch, I must say. I mean, they did take the time to point out some of his missteps, not nearly all of them, of course, and not the French laundry incident, not him going on vacation during the state of emergency, not his kids not being masked when others had, I mean, all of these things. But, you know, again, it's the LA Times, we expect that sort of thing. Um, I don't think it's going to make a difference in the race, but I'm sure, you know, Governor Newsom is pleased with his endorsement. You know, there was a lot of folks that thought he wasn't going to survive the recall and did handily. Do you think that, you know, now a year later, there's going to be any kind of uh, a difference from the voters? Are they fed up with some of the missteps here in California and they'll be seeking a different leader, whether it be an independent, a Democrat or a Republican? Well, it's interesting because I'm watching, you know, where these candidates are spending their money and also where Governor Newsom is spending his money. And I honestly think he is concerned about Michael Schellenberger, the independent. I think he's very concerned about him. Um, so we will see how this plays out. But I, from what I was hearing from you know people on the ground, people in my district, for those who voted for Newsom and who are Democrats, if they have another choice, I think many of them would make that choice because while they didn't vote to recall him, they're not necessarily pleased with how he has handled things. Let's talk about the big topic from this week. Of course, the potential overturning of Roe v. Wade, which would then give local control to each individual state to decide uh, the abortion rights. And the governor making it very clear that he wants it put in California's constitution. Weigh in on that. Yeah, that's all political bluster. <laughs> I mean, that's pure posturing, plain and simple. Anyone who can't see that hasn't been paying attention because abortion rights in California are not in peril. They have not been in peril and they won't be in peril. And they know that and the rest of us know that. But this is more about where well, we're going to take a stand because we will, in doing so, gain national media attention, which is exactly what they did. So mission accomplished. But it's nothing more than that. It doesn't need to be enshrined in the Constitution. And I would dare say, you know, they might want to be careful about putting that on the ballot because maybe it wouldn't turn out the way they had hoped. I mean, we have seen abortions declining over the years. And, I, you know, I don't know if Californians would, would vote to put that in the Constitution or not. Uh, let's expand on that. I believe I understand what you're saying, but what do you mean by abortion rights are not in peril here in California, despite what well, happens with the Supreme yeah. Court? Right, because the Supreme Court ruling, if it goes down the way we saw in the draft, just means that it goes down to the local level. States can decide. Well, does anybody really think that the state of California is going to suddenly make abortion illegal in California? I mean, really? Like That's just not going to happen. So I think it's, it's silly, frankly, for them to make this big grand announcement that they're going to amend the constitution of the state, for goodness sake, for something that is already legal. And it, it's not likely it's going to become illegal in ever. Yeah, I think you're right there. I, I wanted to say that, but I want to make sure that I'm understanding what you're um, what you're alluding to. How about gas tax before we go? I mean, it was interesting. I remember talking to you after uh, the governor did his state of the state address and he brought up this, you know, gas rebate. And you were one of the first piece per people that said, I doubt that's even happening. And lo and behold, mm -hmm. months later, I'm actually kind are. of surprised. Yeah. So do yep. you think there's Here ever any movement on that? 
they can't seem to agree. You know, the problem for them is they don't want to be seen as giving a nod to the oil industry. I mean, they just, they feel that that that's just such a, a horrible stance for them to take. So any relief and gas tax meet to them means, oh, so you're okay with fossil fuels. I mean, that's, it, you know, people are driving cars in California. We have a lot of cars and that's how most people get to work. That's not going to change, but that's their fear that the progressive wing of their party will say, well, hold on, now you're supporting big oil. So they don't want to do a gas tax, or at least some of them don't. And then you have a handful of them who say, yes, let's give a, let's give a rebate. And then you have some who say, let's suspend the gas tax. So they can't land on the target. And that's why you haven't seen anything yet. I mean, has anybody gotten a check? Nope. And it's already May. And Meanwhile, you know, gas where I am is six bucks a gallon. It's higher than that in other parts of the state. And still, no, there's no relief. They just keep talking about it. They just yeah. keep talking about it. And even though, I mean, you're not seeing the same kind of noise about it before, but uh, seven of the last eight days, gas, at least here in San Diego, has gone up. So uh, very interesting times, and I think you're very astute with what's going on in Sacramento. So we'll check in with you again soon, I'm sure. Senator, thanks for your time tonight. You got it. Thanks, Ginger.